Oh hey guys, I have another little audio amplifier board to review for you. It's a Shure Electronics. Let's see if we can get a focus here. It's a 2x8 watt Class D audio amplifier board, TPA3110. And uh, like I said, it's from Shure Electronics. I've had hit and miss results from this company. Some stuff I bought was pure junk, like some of their LEDs. And I bought a little meter for my solar panel. And I installed that a couple years ago, and it still works just fine. So, yeah, I kind of hit and miss. Comes in this small package. I bought it at Parts Express for $10. You might be able to find it for less, but I live about a half hour away from Parts Express, so I can go there and buy things. And if you want to pause the video and read that, that's fine. I'm not going to read that. It's just environmental protection stuff. And here it is. It's a little black board. See if I can get in close. See that chip number? My camera's kind of hit and miss with the focus. Yeah, that's pretty good. TPA3110D2, I believe. And you can see around here, we got connectors for the output, a little terminal block. You can use a um, barrel type connector for power or you can also use the uh, connector block for power. Input is through this uh, eighth inch stereo connector. And for whatever reason, probably saving cost, they didn't put input blocks. However, you can still solder wires if you don't want to use that. It's a uh, filterless design. I don't see any output chokes just some capacitors I'm not sure what that is over there it says ground and SD but there's no terminal block for it and it is small I mean it fits in the palm of your hand there is no heat sink that's a very tiny chip though I do see effort on the back of the board there's all these little vias and um, these soldering lines. I don't know what that's all about. But I think it's all about uh, trying to dissipate heat from the IC because it is very small and there is no proper aluminum heat sink. So I am concerned about how it can dissipate power with 4 ohm loads. Okay, well, enough of this. Let's hook this thing up and see what it can do. One misty morning. It sounds pretty good. I uh, listened to it at low volume, higher volume, and couldn't make out any issues. It's a pretty quiet amp. You know, if I put my ear up to the tweeter, I can hear a little bit of hiss, but it, you know, it's, it's a quiet amp, no problem there. And I, right now I'm doing a quiescent current test. That means how much power does, or uh, how much current does the amp draw when it's just sitting idle? And 30 milliamps. And I have this meter connected in series as well. It says 30 amp milliamps. This one was saying 10. I go, wait a minute, that's not right. I think I need to take this meter apart and clean it up because it's been giving me some wacky readings lately. But 30 milliamps is very good. I've noticed a lot of these Class D amps, 
you know, they're supposed to be good with batteries, but a lot of them draw a lot of quiescent current, over a hundred milliamps. And, you know, you have to figure that into the equation. That, that's quite a bit of current draw, but this one is very good. Even at a normal listening level, it doesn't draw that much power. Man, this thing would be excellent with batteries. I also performed the output short circuit test. What I did, I just shorted across the terminals and the amplifier just shut off. It went dead. When I removed the short, it comes back on. So it has a good short circuit protection. As far as the gain goes for music players, you know, the gain is still a little bit too low. It does get pretty loud when you crank up the music player, but you have to remember these are meant mainly for line level. And uh, music players are not going to quite reach that. Okay, well, I've hooked up some loads here. My non-inductive 8 ohm. This is an 8 ohm. I can't find my other resistor, so I just put this one on. There's one problem doing the power test that's really expected because there's no filters. And that is the output scoped right from our resistor here. And you're just seeing the, uh, it's probably just a noise floor, very thin pulses because there's no signal right now. It keeps jumping around between 160 and 320, but probably because of the noise there but so I'm not exactly sure probably 160 kilohertz is its operating frequency I'd have to take a look at the data sheet so well the scope has a low pass filter but you know that's really made for taking you know noise off of the waveforms there's no real waveform there to take the noise off of so I'm going to have to use a filter and I found these coils on a scrap power supply. A friend gave it to me. He works in the cable business in one of those uh, power supplies for their transform or their uh, amplifiers up on the uh, cable lines. I suppose that's what that is from. And uh, I'll just put some capacitors in there. I could do a uh, you know, a test and find out what the values of these are and the cutoff frequency but I'll just uh, hook it up and see how it works straight out of the gate okay I have it all hooked up here all this just to get the power measurements jeez I hope you guys appreciate this and I want to make sure my filter is not going to attenuate my signal. Around 1K here. You can see it starting to roll it off a bit. But I think we're okay. See, it really starts to roll off because the amplitude is getting smaller. Right around three kilohertz or so but it's pretty flat below that we want to be around 1k okay good before the power test I want to see if there are any distortion harmonics showing up on the scope using this and since I can't fine-tune the volume control on this it's only discrete steps I'll use this to determine the maximum clean power okay well there is a harmonic showing turn that down 
it's not huge or anything but right here definitely something going on there it could be a non-linearity with these filter chokes I'm not sure but it's something I do not see in ordinary amplifier tests you really should you know if you watch my videos I, you really should get nothing but just the background noise maybe a tiny spike but that's kind of unusual I'm not really sure again that it's from the amplifier it could be something with these um, chokes that I'm using as part of the filter and another thing it shuts itself off what's going on here no it's still going well now it's not showing that harmonic anymore well this is very strange Oh, this thing switched to, well, oh, that's why. This thing jumped to another track that had a 200 hertz tone. That's why it switched on me. It, normally I have this set to repeat the track and I guess I didn't have it. Okay, well, let's do the power test now. Okay, normally I don't use this for a power test because there's always that harmonic spike because that function generator has just a lot of distortion and uh, but I think we'll be fine to get the max power out okay we're running about 8.68 volts okay 8.68 squared divided by 8 9.4 at 8 ohms by the way the power supply voltage during that test was 14 and a half volts so with 8 ohms that is actually pretty darn good very good I'm impressed Normally, I'd expect somewhere between 6 or 7 volts, or uh, watts, I mean, but that's really good. This thing is really maximizing the use of the supply voltage to give you decent power into the load. One thing I did notice, though, this thing gets really hot. I mean, even though it's Class D... It's not 100% efficient, so it has to get rid of some heat. And these are 8 ohm loads. 4 ohm loads would just be too much. With no heat sink, no way. I would use this thing with 4 ohm loads. Now, if you don't crank your music up real loud, play that compressed stuff or that bass with the value maxed out, yeah, you can probably get away with 4 ohm loads with music. But, yeah, it's, uh, we're pushing the limit with 8 ohm loads as far as the heat goes. So I would not recommend 4 ohm loads with this. But it does pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with it. I give it a thumbs up. I'd have to delve into this further to see if that harmonic is coming from the amplifier itself or my filter. Some non-linearity creeping in somewhere. But, you know, this video is going to get too long if I do all that stuff. Well, that wraps up this review. Thanks for watching.